Hey there, welcome back. We'll be focusing on the list data structure in this lesson. Let's begin. Lists are a data structure, meaning they can hold information for you in the form of different elements. These are very much like lists you use every day. For example, say you have a shopping list. On that list, you write down different items you need to get from the store. The first item might say apples, and maybe the second item is bananas. So this list of yours contains different pieces of information for you, but it's all held in one place to make it easier to keep track of each of these elements. So when using code true, you can define a list using the same idea. To access these elements, you can use the name of your list and then the elements index inside brackets. This tells CodeTrue, go to this list and fetch the element at this position, represented by the index. CodeTrue is a zero-based language, so to access the first element of your list, you would actually use a zero as the index for that element. Similarly, you'd use an index of three to fetch the fourth element. Zero-based indexing is confusing at first, but it does simplify things in many cases, so actually most commonly used languages, such as Python, use it. As an example, we show here you could have a list of strings with apples, bananas, oranges, and berries. Apples is stored at index 0, and berries is stored at index 3. Range is a function that can quickly make a list of numbers. To do so, you can simply pass in a number to start at, and then a number to count toward but not include. Range automatically counts in steps of 1. For example, range 3, 6 produces the list 3, 4, 5. Notice it does not include 6, the range function automatically counts by 1, and each element in the list is an integer. You could also pass in a single number like 4. This returns a list that starts at 0 and then counts toward 4, but does not include 4. So let's look at how this could be useful. Here we have an animation with a heart that starts out colored violet. Then we can create our list of colors for it to transition into. Here we have a list of colors with red and orange. Next, we can add animations showing this heart change to a color in the list. First, we have it transition from violet to red and then red to orange. Since our colors are stored in a single list, we can easily see what colors are being used and change them if desired. All right, that's all for today. Definitely get more comfortable with lists before moving forward since they are very important for different scenarios especially as we get into further complex programming. Whenever you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson.